Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug video. And as you probably know, we are in the off period between seasons now. And of course, that means no new episodes to review. But one of the more requested things I've seen pop up on my channel and in the comments recently is for me to do retrospective reviews, where I go back and review seasons 1, 2, and 3 because I haven't reviewed them before. After all, I started doing episode reviews with season 4, so we're going to be going right back to the start of season 1 with stormy weather and I'll be doing the English dub for these reviews. And so, with all that being said, let's jump into the review. So we start off the episode with Alec the TV host guy as he introduces two finalists for the Kids Plus Weather Girl competition, Mireille and Aurore Boreal. Seriously? Her parents never even gave her a chance, did they? Also, it feels so wild to me that there's a full-on red carpet event for some Kids Channel Weather Girl comp. Like, it feels so random. And the fact that they're even holding a vote on this and that millions of people get involved, I don't know, it feels very mid-2000s. So for me, that's very nostalgic. Kind of like those singing competitions where you text different numbers based on who you wanted to win and they burn through your credit like nothing else. Oh, good times. And it's such a classic showdown too. The cool, mean girl type and then the, oh no, I'm so shy and awkward and quirky type. Yeah. Even if I didn't know who wins already, it would be pretty clear to me who in the script is going to win knowing this dynamic. And at this point, we cut away to the bakery where we get our first ever look at Marinette as she tries to wrangle Manon, and the writing sets her up to be awkward and clumsy. And I've got to say, hearing her voice, I always used to say that her performance had gone downhill. But now I'm starting to think that my opinions on the voice acting had some rose-tinted goggles on, because all the voice acting, apart from a couple of exceptions in this episode, didn't sound, I don't know, as good as it does later on. It didn't quite sound right. And of course, there's nothing strange about this per se, because when you think about it, the actors would get more comfortable with the characters. So obviously, things would improve in that regard. And first season weirdness is definitely a thing in many franchises. But for some reason, it just took me by surprise. I guess my nostalgia blinded me or I just hadn't rewatched in a very long time. Also, I feel like some of the writing, and I mean the dialogue, not necessarily the actual plot, is a little bit cringe at times. It just feels off in a way that's really hard to describe. So I'm thinking that the English localization team that translates the script for the dub has improved by leaps and bounds as well. Some of these lines are rough. Anyway though, now we get to meet Alia, who arrives on the scene telling Marinette that she has a tailor-made opportunity to go full stalker and watch Adrian at the park as he gets a photo shoot done. Also, why does Alia knock at the door? Is their apartment not attached to the bakery? It's in the middle of the day, isn't it? Wouldn't one of her parents be there to tell Alia to just go on up? It's so odd, because I swear they never ever do this again. Every other time somebody visits, they just enter the house after the parents say hello at the door, and then maybe they knock on Marinette's trap door. Shit, sometimes people just run past them and charge upstairs. Luca, I'm looking at you, mate. Also, Alia in this episode is really great. Just an all-around legend. Her highlights in this scene are calling Marinette out as a socially awkward mess who can't even speak to Adrian, let alone woo him, and then telling Manon that she's a magical, wish-granting unicorn who takes the form of a human with a completely straight face and unwavering voice. Honestly, in this episode, I almost feel like she's way more assertive and on top of things than she is in other seasons. Maybe I'm wrong, but she just feels a little bit different. And whilst I have knocked some elements of this episode, I gotta say that her characterization here is great. And I think I'd like her to be more along these lines again. She definitely mellows out a bit of seasons go, but this is a funner version. So then we cut back to the Weather Girl competition, where Mireille wins the competition, of course. And by a massive margin. Jesus, this show doesn't hold back. These are teenagers. Why would they show the percentages and then tell them specifically how many votes she lost by? And openly just says she got crushed. Ugh, Alec is such an asshole. I love it. And from here, we get our first ever dramatic Hawk Moth monologue. And this one's extra cheesy. And I think the best part about the whole scene, at least for the English dub, is where he sends off the Akuma and does his little stick twirl thing, but unlike literally every other episode where he's like, fly away and evilize them, <laughs> he says nothing. And there's just this deeply awkward silence. And then this makes me think about how he probably just 
stands there quietly for ages, whilst this tiny little butterfly flies all the way to its targets. And how he mostly just does nothing while the villain fights. Does he just stand there in the dark? I've never really thought about it before, but it must be so boring. And also, when she does get akumatized, the English language localization team, well, they strike again. <coughs> and I quote, that's my weather girl. Show the world who the best weather girl really is. Ugh, such a terrible line. And the way he says it, it sounds vaguely dirty. <laughs> we then cut to the park, where we get to see Adrian in the flesh, as Marinette and Alia teach Manon bad habits as they creep on him from behind a tree. And then they do a really awkward walk by after Marinette openly talks about how she's planned her entire future with this person. And why would you admit this to a child? They love to blab. Remembering what I was like at this age, first thing I would do is tell my mum. And since her mum's friends with Marinette's mum, the cringe will come full circle, as her parents discover how obsessive their daughter is. Ugh, can't believe how clingy she is even in episode one. For some reason, I thought it was more a gradual thing. But nope, full on, we're going to get married and have babies and a dog and a hamster. And even saying that in front of your friend is weird to me, especially in the story, since they've only been friends for a few months at this point. Alia, it's not too late to make new friends. Run away, mate. Anyway, though, as all of this is happening, Stormy Weather freezes Mireille in a block of ice before we instantly cut back to Marinette and co, who are still creeping on Adrian, but have gotten even closer. Manon then notices that they have balloons with Marais' face on them, which to me is absurd. How big was this competition? Was it so popular that they had merchandise ready to sell the same day of the announcement? They're acting like she won a bloody Oscar, not a Kids Channel weather girl spot. Also, what the hell's up with the photographer and gorilla intimidating these girls to leave a public park? Pfft, dank. We then return to Stormy Weather, who walks back out onto the red carpet as the crowd chants for Mireille. And hey, I don't mean to be judgmental, but I'm gonna. And I think there are too many full-grown adults at this thing, and they do not look like journalists or supervising parents, just fans of this 13-year-old girl. And it's not like she's an actor or a musician, just a random girl who won a weather girl comp. It is odd. Also, the guy that asks, Oh, where's Murray? Is literally in the very next scene selling balloons. Come on, guys. At least intersperse the reused models a little bit better than this. Don't have them appear in back to back scenes. Oh, and Stormy Weather kills these people, by the way. She full on kills them. Look how fast they got swept away. People would be colliding with cars and buildings, broken necks, spines, you name it. Bleeding on the brain. Oh, and then she flies off. And it's really clear from this that this is the pilot episode, hey? I mean, they try a lot of cinematic stuff. And some works, and some, like this, is a little bit cringy. But back in the park, Marinette has to be guilted into actually doing her job as a babysitter instead of harassing Adrian, while Stormy gets triggered by a Murray balloon and sets her sight on the park too. Alia then comes up with the worst excuse of all time to try and get Marinette into the photo shoot with Adrian, before hopping on the merry-go-round with Manon, before it gets frozen in a block of ice by Stormy. And it's like, yeah, okay, they did this to raise the stakes. But why, of all the people or the places, would she freeze the merry-go-round? Why not the balloon salesman? Hmm. Oh, and then Marinette just full-on transforms into Ladybug in the middle of the park. And Adrian pretty much does the same. So I'm guessing they just don't care about people figuring out who they are at this point. If only Suhan could see them now, he'd have a mental breakdown. And then Ladybug even doubles down on her smooth brain by trying to wire cut the ice dome. But let's take a look at the picture. Based on what she's doing, she's trying to slice through the ice, right? The entire dome at once. But when she does that, since it's looped around it, it's gonna just keep getting pulled tighter as she breaks through the ice. So one, She's put the people inside at risk of getting crushed by falling ice if the dome begins to crack under the pressure, but even more likely, when it cuts through the ice, wouldn't Alia now be at risk of being sliced in half as the wire gets pulled tighter and tighter around her? Look where she's standing! The wire is about her waist height, and if it can slice an ice sheet, it's going to slice a person, we thinks, and too fast for Marinette to react. Dead. And then we come to the first big battle between the heroes and stormy weather. 
which has some cool moments, way more cinematic than most of the fights in future episodes and seasons. Do they not do the awesome wall running after this episode? Because that was sick. And the moment where they both leap in the air to attack, ah, straight out of anime, loved it. Also, this was the audience's first look at Cat Noir, and for almost the entire fight, he is treated like a joke. I'm starting to wonder if he was ever important to the show. Here, he's such an afterthought. Also, Ladybug banters and borderline flirts with him way more than I remembered. And he was way more normal too. Much better than his creepy won't take no for an answer persona that he adopts later on. But then after she claps them, she just leaves. Like, she doesn't even want the miraculouses at this point? <laughs> Bit inefficient, but okay. We then cut back to the ice block where the fire department is trying to cut through the ice with an axe. Dude, what you doing? Wouldn't this risk cracking the dome and crushing the kid? Surely it would be less risky to, I don't know, spray it down with your hoses because streams of water actually melt ice. That's a fact. Or, I don't know, maybe melt the thing with your cutting torch. They would have one in the fire truck. And I mean, a cutting torch shoots out fire. So yeah, it would melt through pretty quickly before the whole thing can crack and fall, but oh well. These are professional firefighters. But back to stormy weather, she lures the heroes to the TV studio to sneak attack them and trap them, but gives herself away by laughing evilly from behind them instead of just attacking them outright. Typical smooth brain villain. Ooh, but it's her secret plan because she short circuits the building. But instead of finishing the job here, after all, Ladybug can't even see in the dark, but apparently she can. It would just be her versus Cat Noir, who was pretty bad in the first fight, let's be honest. So this feels a bit like plot armor. Also, do they ever use the Cat Noir night vision thing again at all? Ever? Because this feels like it was a useful and interesting power that's not really been mentioned again. Also, once again, lots of really cinematic camera angles. Why did they not keep this style? I think it's pretty fun and unique. But anyway, she ruins her advantage by taking them onto the roof to spring her trap and shoots hail at them. Ooh, she has lightning powers, but yes, hail's the best choice. And I know this hail's freakishly big, but still, these people are superhumans. I think they'd be all right. Anyway, Cat Noir holds it off with his staff while Ladybug thinks of a plan, and when she thinks of one, Stormy Weather kindly stops using her hail powers so that Cat Noir can cataclysm the billboard, and Ladybug executes one of her most specific plans of all time. Seriously, what a maneuver. Using the beach towel as a paraglider? And then the spinning crane beam thingy knocking away the parasol at that exact moment. Sure, okay, why not? Everything's reversed and the day is saved. And what do you know, lads? Turns out melting the ice would have been a good idea. Once again, these are professional firefighters. Goodness me. Anyway, we then end the episode with Marinette getting cockblocked by Menon, who gets to be in the photo shoot with Adrian while she has to watch on. Ooh, happy ending for everybody. And so, that brings me to the end of my first retrospective review. Let me know if you're keen for any more, and I will just remind you that these are only my opinions. But now I'd like to hear yours. If you've got time, re-watch the episode first. And now, what do you think about the episode? Years after its release. Do you like it? Hate it? What did you think at the time? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.